Welcome to More Living with Jim Brogan, your source of information for living the best years of your life, your way. For more than a decade, host Jim Brogan and his expert guests have come together each week to share important news and advice that can impact the lives and well-being of those who are retired and those nearing retirement. Learn about issues like health and fitness, financial planning, social security benefits, investment advice, and more. And now, here's the host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Good morning, East Tennessee, and welcome to More Living with Jim Brogan, where it's all about living the best years of your life your way. This is News Talk 98.7 WOKI, and you know... The coronavirus infection rates and hospitalizations are continuing to climb throughout the world, the United States, and even here in East Tennessee. And most people are taking the Knox County Safer at Home order seriously and are spending the bulk of their time at home away from the general public. And I know the weather has been really beautiful the last few days. My goodness, yesterday afternoon was just stunning. And many of us who are now working from home have been taking advantage of getting outside. I've seen so many people out walking, running, riding bikes. Heck, I'm going to be hitting tennis with my brother today. And, uh, you know, people are observing social distancing rules and they're getting fresh air. But it is springtime in East Tennessee. And spring, for many people, brings itchy, watery eyes, runny noses, and continual sneezing. And allergies are a major public health concern every year with more than 50 million Americans suffering from seasonal allergies. And Knoxville, while beautiful, is consistently ranked in the top cities most challenging in the United States for allergy sufferers. So with allergies starting to come into full effect right now, how do you know if it's a seasonal allergy or something much worse like coronavirus. I know everybody's on edge. We don't want to come down with this illness. But some of these symptoms may kind of look alike and mask one or the other. So this week, I'm privileged to have Dr. Ty Prince, who's a good friend of the radio stations, a friend of mine uh, and of our radio show that we've had on many, many times over the years. He's of the Allergy, Asthma, Asthma and Sinus Center. He's joining us by phone today. He's a Knoxville native. He's been practicing for over 25 years and is a specialist in adult, adolescent, and pediatric allergy, asthma, and clinical immunology. Welcome, Ty. It's great to have you with us again. Thank you so much, Dan, for having me again. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, You know, Dr. Prince, coronavirus is changing our lives. It's consuming every minute of the news. Many people are living in fear. What has been your personal experience in reaction to the outbreak? Well, certainly a lot of fear, and and this is where we need to replace fear with facts. Uh, We get a lot of calls, of course, uh, trying to differentiate the symptoms of allergies from the the coronavirus. Uh, And and, uh, that's something that we also uh, deal with during flu season as well, too. But... You know, when this is all done, Jim, I believe that we're going to have really good uh, guidelines in place for for all uh, epidemic type uh, illnesses, which we've known for years that this possibility exists. We we've got air travel. You can be in in uh, the middle of Africa and be back in in Knoxville within uh, you know uh, sixteen to twenty four hours uh, and on a crowded airplane. So. You know, we were concerned about the Ebola virus uh, uh, as well, too. But Anthony Fauci spoke to our uh, uh, hospital uh, back in the 90s uh, at Chattanooga Erlanger saying this is going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Uh, we've got too too much traffic and, and too many people moving about too fast. What have you been seeing in East Tennessee or hearing from some of your colleagues as to what's going on with emergency rooms and intensive care as the cases have picked up and people are concerned about their symptoms? Well, the the ER, of course, ERs and hospitals are just getting prepared. We can get a pretty good idea watching Nashville what's going to happen uh, uh, that's that's the area, the, the Nashville and, and Nashville area, Davidson County, Sumner County, and Williamson County. Uh, uh, that's over uh, 350 cases, that area up there. Uh, 
uh, of the thousand or so cases we have in the state. But, uh, you know, we're going to be able to see in these larger cities what's going on and, and how they've handled it. But uh, I did get a call from some of the physicians at UT Hospital, and they're they're uh, trying to get as many masks as they can and maybe, uh, maybe doing some uh, short-term research on uh, using allergy pill and mattress covers uh, for for gowns and and uh, not mask, but uh, uh, maybe a, a scarf over a mask that would allow the the uh, N95 mask to last longer. Uh, so they're looking at that, and, and there, there's research going on all all over the place, uh, uh, trying to to figure out better ways to protect the healthcare personnel because when they go down, uh, we don't have many to replace them with. Yeah, and actually, since we're on this topic, and I'm going to cover this, Dr. Prince, in my dollars and cents segment today about how we can really help. And there's a great organization called directrelief.com that their main thing is to get out medical supplies and equipment and things of need to doctors and medical professionals all over the world. And actually, one of the things that they've been pushing out is oxygen concentrators that can be used, devices that can help patients breathe using equipment at home instead of being in a, in a hospital on a ventilator. It's direct directrelief.com. Uh, um, I just wanted to kind of throw in a plug there because, you know, there are things as we listen, you know, we're, we're locked in our homes, we're quarantining ourselves, you know, and we're kind of slowing down a little bit, which is kind of a good thing in a way because we're, we're reconnecting, we're having great family time. But there are ways we can help and reach out to others, and I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Now, Dr. Prince, I know that uh, asthma is a big specialty of yours with everything going on uh, that you deal with typically every year. But, of course, the news has reported that asthma patients are really in a high-risk category for the effects of coronavirus. So what are the concerns that you have and that you can express to us for people that deal with asthma specifically? The biggest thing is not to stop the medications that have been recommended by your doctor. Uh, It's not the time to stop the medications. People are getting into the package inserts, and all the package inserts for any type of topical steroid, that includes nasal sprays and topical steroid creams, all of them uh, have the warnings of systemic administration of these steroids, uh, one of which is uh, saying that it could lower your immune system. But it's all a situation of do the risk outweigh the benefits and the very, very small amount of risk of a topical steroid. Those are the inhaled steroids like like Advair and Brio and, and Dulera and Simbicort and, and a host of others. Uh, those risks are very small uh, when you're using topical but if you've already got asthma, especially the moderate to severe asthmatics, uh, if you stop your medications, uh, you're going to get in trouble a lot of times with your asthma, especially with allergy season coming in. So remind everyone that it's not a time to stop the medications, uh, to keep using your maintenance asthma medications. But, yes, uh, you know, any type of lung condition, uh, is going to increase your risk of having a bad outcome with the coronavirus because this is a virus that that attacks the lungs first in some cases. It just has a predilection for the lungs, which makes it such a deadly virus. Uh, but um, the time is not to stop your, your asthma medicines and, and call your doctor if you have that concern. Don't try to get information off the off the internet, uh, unless it's on the CDC, uh, cdc.gov, uh, that's a great place to, to get information that's, that's been, uh, filtered and, and, uh, vetted, uh, before it gets there. Um, and you can watch, uh, Dr. Fauci on television too. There's nothing that's going to come out of his mouth. that's not, not been vetted and, and thoroughly thought out. I've met him years ago. He's a brilliant man. And, sure. uh, you know, pay attention to the get, – get good sources of your information. You know, um, Ty, I, I know you, you know, have many allergy and asthma patients that do regular visits for shots to your office or other types of treatments. How's the outbreak, outbreak changed your office procedures? 
Well, we we have uh, tents at some of our uh, four of our offices right now where we're screening people. We're trying to we screen we pre-screen them by telephone first, uh, and then um, if they if they if they're having an asthma attack, we're screening them in the in the uh, parking lot before they even get out of their car. Uh, for the shots, you know, there's some people. Uh, for example, the patients on on B shots. Uh, we're coming into the springtime here, so there are some people we think the the uh, risk of missing a shot uh, would be greater than the risk of uh, getting uh, coronavirus. And remember, these shots not only not only uh, boost your immunity against allergens; they we think they just boost your immunity in general. So uh, we're we're we have it worked out now where you can call in and uh, we'll come get you in the parking lot. Uh, and and bring you back, give you a shot. We have empty waiting rooms, and we we do have if patients do want to wait, we've got the seats uh, set six feet apart. Uh, and then as soon as those people leave, that that chair gets cleaned, and and we basically we got it worked out. We pretty much get in and out uh, without touching anything uh, to get your shots. So we have That's seen great. a fifty percent decrease in the shots, and you know the people that that we're getting them. Uh, some, some people get shots. They range from every two to four weeks. They can decide. So the ones that are, we're getting them uh, as an option of every two to four weeks, maybe those people were telling them to wait the full four weeks before they get their shot. Uh, but, we're visiting uh, with Dr. Uh, Ty Prince this morning. He's with the Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center here in Knoxville. And when we come back, you know, is it, we're really going to dive into, is it seasonal allergies you're dealing with, or could it be something worse? How do you differentiate? How do you know if you need to call your doctor or seek medical care? So don't go away as you listen to More Living with Jim Brogan right here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. You are listening to More Living with Jim Brogan. During the week, Jim is a financial advisor, an author and speaker with an MBA from the University of Tennessee who specializes in helping people in or near retirement plan for the next phase of their lives. You can reach Brogan Financial during the week at 865-862-6800 or on the web at broganfinancial.com. And now, here's Senior Market Advisor Magazine's 2011 National Advisor of the Year and host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Welcome back to More Living here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I'm your host, Jim Brogan. And, you know, is it seasonal allergies or could it be something much worse? Coronavirus, the flu even. So uh, that's what we're getting into today. We've got Dr. Ty Prince with us, a good friend of the show and a personal friend who uh, is with the Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center, and he's joining us by phone. I'm also joining you by phone this morning as we've, uh, you know, we're safer in place as much as we possibly can. And Dr. Prince, the CDC and health professionals are recommending several things to limit our exposure and chances of contacting contracting the virus. Of course, the first is social distancing, and you know I know our ver- our office at Brogan Financial we're 100 percent virtual now, so we're doing full capacity, but all of us are virtual. Um, when I get out on the road, it's still amazing how many cars I see out on the road. How do you think? What are you seeing? Do you think? I mean, most of the people I know are doing distancing properly. You see these crazy stories on the news. What are you seeing? You think people are taking this seriously enough? I was out yesterday, you know, I, I encourage my patients to to look back and decide, you know, what you absolutely have to get out. Uh, don't regret it. All these cases, when you read them on the Internet, these personal cases, all of them have this significant regret that they did something, went somewhere that they really didn't have to go. Uh, so uh, I agree with you. There were a few more cars out than I expected yesterday. I went out to, uh, to the... Um, to the grocery to, to, to get some, uh, some food. And I, I was surprised how many cars are out there. If you look at some of the roads in Los Angeles, though, you don't see anything. <laughs> New York's the same yeah, way. Yeah, New York uh, is a ghost town. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, you don't want to have regrets, uh, that you went somewhere and came into contact with other people, uh, when you, uh, when you didn't have to, uh, for example, I went to the meat market, Good Willie's, uh, meat market on old Homburg yesterday. I saw someone going in, 
uh, I waited until they came out before I went in. Uh, I went in, they all had masks, all the employees had masks on and the, uh, and plenty of wipes for their surfaces. And they had removed a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, displays and things. So they just had clean surfaces. Uh, and then they allowed me to swipe my card with it and they put an X on it, uh, for my signature. So I didn't have to touch anything. And then I came home and I unpacked all the meat uh, and washed my hands uh, since it had been touched by these uh, other employees. So, you know, just take precautions. Wash frequently. Wash your hands 10 to 20 times a day. Take some uh, Clorox wipes or Santa wipes and wipe off all your knobs, your light switches, your remote control, uh, your your gear shift and steering wheel and your car and the radio uh, thing just just clean like heck uh, clean like my wife does yeah uh, I, this, for the first time I'm not making fun of my wife for being over clean and I'm not yeah. just in the ball I'm I'm trying to be as clean as she is it'll never happen but uh, but I don't want to look back on this and re- regret anything that I couldn't have been a little cleaner yeah I'm I'm, I'm completely with you on that it's amazing how much. Uh, more we're cognizant and aware of all those kinds of things. Um, now let's just dive into the allergy stuff because, you know, it can be sometimes allergies. I know for me, as you know, Dr. Prince, you know, I get hit hard a few, you know, two or three times a year, it seems. And it's, in some ways, it's almost worse than being sick. And we're ranked typically in the top 20 most challenging places to live with spring allergies um, by the Allergy and Asthma Foundation of America. And it seems though spring, as though spring is always an especially challenging time for allergy sufferers. What are the primary irritants that you're seeing in East Tennessee that are affecting people right now? Right now, tree pollen and mold is is what's out right now. Uh, and uh, you know, of course, people are spending more time outside. Uh, but as you said earlier, Jim, people don't just develop allergies out of nowhere. People have typically have allergies for a few years prior to the point where they're miserable. And so if you know you've had seasonal allergies before and you go out right now and you previously had problems in the springtime, uh, then uh, it's more likely to be an allergy than a coronavirus. It also is going to be more itchy, watery, sneezy um, it, that's responsive to antihistamines and worse off antihistamines. So uh, if you get quick relief from your antihistamines, uh, then that's more likely to be uh, an allergy than a virus. And remember, this coronavirus, it, it goes more to the lungs than the nasal passages. The, the nasal passages are affected, but but not as much as the lungs are. So you got with with uh, allergies, it tends to be more in the nasal passage and eyes, and with the coronavirus, more in the lungs. But generally, most people are going to get some relief from antihistamines for the allergies, but not from the coronavirus. You're not going to see great relief from that. Uh, just like people that have colds, they'll, they'll they'll have a slight reduction in their their nasal symptoms and their eye symptoms when they take an antihistamine, but but you don't get major relief. Uh, and the, last but not least, most people don't get systemic symptoms unless they have severe allergies. Uh, you can get some cold-like symptoms, but those symptoms will fairly quickly go away after you reduce your exposure and and take the appropriate medications. Now, you know, you mentioned the coughing, and it seems like this winter, in January and February especially, man, I mean, everybody, I mean, everywhere you went, people were dealing with coughs. I mean, my wife and I went through some bronchitis, um, and it seemed like so many people we know dealt with that this year. Uh, What about the difference in bronchitis and something like coronavirus, and if you've had bronchitis or have bronchitis, what do you think your risk is? Is that one of these underlying conditions that could really cause problems if you get coronavirus? Yes, anytime you get an infection on top of an infection, you know, we, of course, would be talking about acute bronchitis. Uh, chronic bronchitis goes for months and typically repeat, repeats uh, two, year, two or more years in a row, uh, three months at a time. But with acute bronchitis, you know, that can be viral. I, I saw a lot of two- to four-week viral uh, chest infections this year, and that's kind of what we see. We have years like that where, where people will – 
seem to get these viruses that last a lot longer. And it's pretty easy to tell, you know, these are highly contagious. Allergies are not contagious. So, you know, if four members of your family come down with the same symptoms at the same time, that's not going to be allergies. But if you have any lung condition of any kind, uh, uh, then you're going to have a greater chance of getting compromised by this virus, uh, uh, asthma included. So if somebody has coronavirus symptoms or they're having issues with their chest and their lungs or, or in their throat, what do people need to do? What are you recommending people do? Because we don't want to overwhelm the health care system. We know a lot of these cases are mild. So what do you recommend, Dr. Prince? Well, call your doctor. Uh, call your health care professional and, and get the updated advice from that person. There is a lab here in Knoxville that's going to going to uh, give us kits Integrity Labs, uh, 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 Congressman Burchett uh, got with uh, the owner of the Integrity Labs, and it looks like we're going to have a few hours turnaround with this uh, test uh, that they're going to do. Um, but it'll probably be 24 hours, you know, once we get the test delivered to the Integrity Labs and then get the results, probably looking more at 24 hours before we get that result. But, but uh, stay at home first. And call your healthcare professionals. Um, the one, the thing we're worried about the most, Jim, is people getting into trouble from a respiratory standpoint. And that's where you, if you have shortness of breath along with your fever, about 90, 95% of these people are getting a, a fever. Uh, and that's usually above a, a 100.5 uh, to 101.5 and above. And these people, uh, if you have that combined with uh, significant shortness of breath, uh, especially walking up stairs or, or walking up slight inclines if you're getting real short of breath, uh, that's when you need to call your health care professional and see if you, you need to, to, to get seen or go to the hospital. And uh, most of the hospitals are going to have some sort of a screen uh, before you get to the emergency room, just like our office. We're going to screen you before you get there. Uh, and if it's a mild case, uh, encourage you to stay home. Uh, and if yeah, there's such a danger case, just with even going into those facilities, right? I mean, it's correct. a danger to that's yourself correct. and to everybody else that's there. So we've just got to use, you know, some caution and some just, you know, use some wisdom. If your systems, if your symptoms are mild, call your doctor. I'm, I'm sure there's a way you can get tested. Um, I'm glad to hear what's going on with local integrity labs. I mean, I think that's a great thing. I heard Tim Burchett talking about that last week, or maybe it was a week before last. So that's all great information. Tell you what, we're going to get to our next break. When we come back, I really want to dive into what a little bit more into seasonal allergies, what's going on right now, what can you be doing about it. We're also going to have our dollars and cents segment. What are some ways you can be helping others that have needs? We need to be reaching out and helping others as much as we can. Most of us don't have coronavirus here in Knoxville. I know some do, uh, but most of us don't. But yet we're sheltering in place. What are some ways we can reach out and help others? So don't go away as you listen to more Living with Jim Brogan here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Through his weekly radio show, television news appearances, and adult education classes taught at the University of Tennessee and Pellissippi State Community College, Jim taps into his extensive knowledge and experience to address issues important to living your best retirement. Join Jim every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI and visit him online at broganfinancial.com. And now, here's the host of More Living, Jim Brogan. Thank you for tuning in this morning to More Living with Jim Brogan, where it's all about living the best years of your life your way. I'm calling in today, and I've got our good friend Dr. Ty Prince uh, from the uh, Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center here in Knoxville. Uh, how do season, what's the diff- How do seasonal allergies look different than coronavirus or something even more serious? That's what we're talking about today. And uh, before we get back to Dr. Prince, it is time for Dollars and Cents. Want to be sure you are getting the most out of your retirement? For all the years of your retirement? That's the primary goal of More Living with Jim Brogan and our Dollars and Cents segment, where we provide you with an important financial tip that will help positively impact the quality of your life in retirement. And now, here's Jim with this week's Dollars and Cents tip. 
You know, we're a society that is more connected than ever, and this COVID-19 issue has kind of disconnected us physically. Now, there's technology is a great thing, but we're still disconnected physically, and it's creating feelings, feelings of uncertainty and fear. You know, it's hard not to be paralyzed thinking that there isn't something you can do to make a positive impact during this crisis. And there, there are ways that you can support those who are in need the most. So we're going to cover a few of those things today in dollars and cents. Um, number one, we can help get medical supply shipped to where people need it the most. The humanitarian organization Direct Relief has been shipping oxygen concentrators all over the world. These devices can help patients breathe using equipment at home instead of being in a hospital on a ventilator. And, of course, we know about all the shortages of masks and other medical equipment. They have provided, since January 1st, over $1.5 billion of medical aid, over 7.4 million pounds of supplies. So they help support medical providers all over the United States and all over the world. You can go to directrelief.com. Again, directrelief.com to learn more about how you can support this tremendous organization. You can also volunteer with Meals on Wheels. You know, many older Americans depend on Meals on Wheels for regular food delivery, and the, the demand's only increasing. But, you know, there's another thing. Many older adults are feeling such isolation and the long-term effects of being at home by themselves and the interaction with Meals on Wheels can provide a much-needed social interaction. And Meals on Wheels chapters even keep in touch with area patrons through telephone reassurance programs. So you can go to MealsOnWheelsAmerica.org. Another thing is to donate money to a reputable nonprofit. A great resource for nonprofits is CharityNavigator.org. They provide ratings on charities that measure how effectively they're getting money into the hands of people that they serve. So it's a great way to check up on the fiscal responsibility of your charities you want to support. Another thing you can do is support local food banks. You know, we know what's been happening to, happening to the store shelves as people have been stockpiling, stockpiling non-perishables. Grocery stores don't have enough to donate to local food banks. And uh, you can help with either food or making even monetary donations to your local food bank. You can go to feedingamerica.org, also Second Harvest, TN. Dot org right here in East Tennessee. Another thing is to give blood. The American Red Cross is there's a big shortage of blood all over the country, and they're urging healthy adults to donate blood or platelets. Now, some people worry there's going to be a low, blow, a low blood donor, donor participation. According to the Red Cross, there is no indication that COVID-19 can be transmitted through blood transfusions. So if you go to redcrossblood.org, you can find out more about where those centers are here in Knoxville. And then finally, think about the homeless here in Knoxville. The homeless have weakened immune systems from pre-existing conditions, uh, plus most of them are uninsured. Reach out to homeless shelters and organizations. See what they need the most. A couple of great charities here in Knoxville, CARM, uh, Knox Area Rescue Ministries, CARM.org, and then also Volunteer Ministry Center, which is vmcinc.org, to help support not only during this crisis, but well into the future. So I think, you know, we've got that volunteer spirit here in Tennessee. Nobody rallies to a cause of those that need help more than Tennesseans. And so I would urge you as your home and spending more time at home with your family, uh, these are some great ways that you can support those that are in need. I have a blog posted exactly on this topic. If you go to broganfinancial.com, click on blog, and you can read my blog with these six ideas with links to local charities and organizations to help. That's our Dollars and Cents segment for this week. You can find this week's Dollars and Cents segment and others by visiting BroganFinancial.com. And do check us out on BroganFinancial.com. Listen, we've got a lot of people that have called our office in the last two weeks 
that are hungry for information and ideas uh, on how to handle their 401k, their financial planning. Maybe you're getting to reti- ready to retire in the next couple of years, or you just retired, or what if you're eight or ten years from retirement? You know, you don't want to panic and sell right now, but you also, you know, it may be a mistake to do nothing, especially if you're getting closer to retirement. And, you know, I teach the classes, and UT and Pellissippi State have canceled their physical classes. Well, I've got great news. We are still holding. The UT and Pellissippi State has partnered with us to continue to hold our classes virtually. We're doing virtual video classes. We just had one this past Thursday. And uh, my next class, it's through Pellissippi State, and uh, it's on April the 7th and the 14th. So it's a week from Tuesday night. We're doing two two two-hour sessions on the 7th and 14th. It's fully virtual. Things went out off without a hitch this past week. And if you go to PellissippiRetirementPlanning.com, you can find out more information about this class. Um, you know, it was going to be out at the Blunt County campus is where we were slated to teach this class, but now it's going to be virtual. So you could be anywhere. You could be in Knoxville. You could be in Oak Ridge. You could be in Clinton. You could be in Maryville. You could be wherever you like, and you can log in and get real information about the seven major areas you need to be addressing in your financial plan and what do you need to be doing right now. You know, when we talk about investments and income, you know, with what's going on in the marketplace, we're in the midst of a bear market, It's and the, the, the rapidity of that downturn is reminiscent of 1987. So what do you need to be doing? Um, we'll cover that in the class. And, again, it's virtual. We use Zoom.com for our teleconferencing. Uh, again, you can go to PellissippiRetirementPlanning.com. Tennessee's also going to be putting on the class Financial Survival for Retirement. That's on April the 28th and May the 5th. Again, it will be fully virtual with video. You can go to FinancialSurvivalForRetirement.com for all of my classes and to follow uh, us and all the information that we push out in our weekly blogs and posts and the information with dollars and cents and retirement minutes, go to broganfinancial.com. You can sign up for our e-newsletter blast every week to help you stay informed so you can make prudent decisions that can impact the quality of your life. This morning on More Living, we're visiting with Dr. Ty Prince. He's a good friend of the show for um, over the years. He's with the Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center here in Knoxville, and he's always so generous with his time. And Dr. Prince, let's dive. We've talked some about, you know, is it allergies? Is it coronavirus? Is it a flu? Is it a cold? Let's dive more into allergies since we're getting into that time every year where we can have peak time, peak allergies, itchy eyes. Uh, we deal with all these things. Um, for many of us, the first instinct when our allergies are triggered is to reach for over-the-counter antihistamines. And with the run yes. on pharmacy shelves for medications, um, what are some of the best things and the best treatment options we should be looking at for our seasonal allergies? I'm glad you brought that up. Just in the purchasing, if you can get these things online, have them delivered to you, obviously the uh, the drug stores uh, are going to be a, a greater chance of getting exposure uh, to to people who might be ill. But um, your most effective medication for for allergies is going to be the the nasal topical steroids. So, Flonase, Nasacort, Rhinocort, all those those are over the counter. Uh, you should be able to get those uh, uh, over the internet, have them delivered to your house. Uh, then, of course, the long-acting, non-sedating antihistamines to use in the daytime: Allegra, Claritin, Zyrtec, or their uh, Claranex or uh, Zizol. Those are your 24-hour non-sedating antihistamines taken the daytime. Uh, and then the stronger antihistamines at night, if you don't have any contraindications of the stronger uh, antihistamines, we worry most about. Uh, difficulty with urination, uh, especially in us old men, uh, with these older antihistamines, uh, and then uh, uh, also uh, uh, op- uh, closed angle glaucoma. Uh, and with the nasal steroids, you have to be concerned with uh, open angle 
glaucoma, which is a more common type of glaucoma. But to make a long story short, uh, non-sedating antihistamines in the daytime, sedating your stronger ones at night. Uh, eye drops are a big deal right now. We got with this this uh, virus is transmitted from uh, uh, hand uh, mucous membranes, including the eyes and mouth and the nasal passage. Uh, so preventing those symptoms that cause you to to rub your eyes or to or to itch or scratch your nose and rub your nose uh, might be important. Uh, for acute treatment of, of eye problems, uh, just the good old-fashioned uh, Visine-type eye drops. These are called the vasoconstrictor drops. Don't use them more than a couple of weeks, or you'll wind up uh, getting rebound redness of your eyes. But those are the most effective. And don't ever forget about cold temperature. One of the best treatments for itch is cold temperature. Put an ice pack or a gel pack on your over your eyes and, and let it rest for a few minutes. And that keeps you from rubbing your eyes, which releases the histamine. Uh, so we have an old joke in the allergy field. It's uh, how do you cure allergic eyes? You cut the patient's hands off. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I've not ever heard put, that about the eyes. That makes a lot of sense of putting something cold. Yeah. Uh, that's any, a, any type yeah, of itch, not, Jim. That's a that's a free way to treat it. It stops it. Even the, you know, some people get a mosquito bite on their leg and and start scratching it. Scratch the whole it body it is, uh, uh, so if you treat that with a cold pack, uh, it'll stop not only that itch but uh, the itch on the rest of your body too. But on, on the eyes, just keeping the pressure away from your eyes and the hot water. Don't don't get in the shower and run hot water over your you know cold temperature, cold, cold, cold. Everything. You can even put your cold your eye drops in the uh, in the refrigerator and, and chill those and put uh, cold artificial uh, drops in your eyes. Uh, I'll sometimes carry a little aluminum foil and keep mine. Uh, take them from the refrigerator, put them in aluminum foil, put them in my pocket, and every time my eyes itch, just uh, just drop a little uh, cold artificial tears uh, in your eyes. It's a great way to treat them. Now, Ty, you mentioned Flonase, Nasacort, um, something like Flonase. Does it? H- how quickly does it work, or is it something that's that you really kind of have to build up in your system? Yeah, that's uh, you know generally about two days before you see big differences. I have patients who swear they can spray it in there once a month and get instant relief. We think a lot of those patients would probably get the same relief with uh, uh, nasal saline. At least our studies show that. So, uh, so there's some placebo effect it. there, I guess. Yeah. A good rule of thumb is uh, is if you're having regular symptoms, use the uh, nasal steroids on a regular basis, of course. Uh, that's when the patients sure. always ask me, we you know, we don't want to send people out and have them on a nasal steroid year-round if they don't need it. Uh, but if they're having symptoms daily, then that, that's your best treatment of the nasal steroids. Tell you what, we're going to get to our last break. When we come back, we're going to talk about allergies in the home. We're all kind of cooped up. Now, with the weather, yes. we're getting out some, but we're spending more time in our homes. So let's, we're going to talk about allergy in the homes as we visit with Dr. Ty Prince of the Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center here in Knoxville. Don't go away. This is More Living on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Thank you for listening to More Living with Jim Brogan. If you miss any of today's show or want to listen to it again, visit broganfinancial.com where you can access the podcast and other educational materials to help you in your journey through retirement. And now, here's Senior Market Advisor Magazine's 2011 National Advisor of the Year and host of More Living, Jim Brogan. there for a minute. I'm so sorry about that as you've been listening to More Living with Jim Brogan 
here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. And by the way, just to let you know, we do have, we've partnered with Pellissippi State and with the University of Tennessee. We are going to be having our classes virtually, virtual video. We're hosting all of that. You can find out more at BroganFinancial.com. we got two of them coming up in April, one about a week and a half, the other in late April. Again, go to BroganFinancial.com and click on Classes. Uh, we're visiting with Dr. Ty Prince this morning. Is it seasonal allergies or something worse? And we're really getting into allergies. And as I said there, Dr. Prince, before the break, um, you know, so much we, – we're staying at home, we're in our homes, and homes can track in a lot of allergens. What recommendations do you suggest – for people to make their home more friendly for their seasonal allergies. The outdoor pollens from getting inside, just keeping the windows and doors shut, putting your air on recycled air in your house, of course, uh, the central air system. You don't have to have an allergy filter in there. Uh, just a good high efficiency filter is probably adequate. Uh, these very often have MERV ratings, MERV. Uh, I recommend at least a 12. That's what I have in my house. Um, and really, you're doing 95% of the of the take care of the problem just by keeping your windows and doors shut and using recycled air. Um, and then, of course, yeah, how, uh, how thick uh, are the, these these allergy filters we put in our returns, Doctor Prince? I mean, I guess we could go. You know, we if you go overboard, I mean, some of those are so thick it really hurts the circuit. It, it, it reduces the circulation. I mean, what's Absolutely. the right balance there? Uh, that's why I think uh, a high efficiency filter is better, in my opinion. Uh, the filter people disagree with me, of course, but we did some small studies when I was in training where we looked at houses and did air samples in the rooms with a high efficiency filter in their house versus an allergy filter, and we could not detect any differences in the particulates in those rooms. You got to remember that air has to blow through an air duct, and then when it blows out, it stirs up a lot. Uh, so I do recommend a couple of things. One is to keep your fan speed, your your uh, maintenance person, uh, heating and air people can change your internal fan speed to low. And what that does, it slows the airflow through the house, uh, and the, it does cause the house to cool and heat. Uh, um, uh, it doesn't do it as rapidly, but you don't uh, you keep good airflow. Uh, if you have your fan speed on high, you're going to heat and cool your house very quickly, uh, but uh, you're not going to get the airflow throughout your house. And in East Tennessee, we need good air circulation so we don't grow mold in our homes. And so uh, uh, keeping your air on low, uh, especially when you're out of town and things like that, leave your leave your central system on. You don't have to have your temperature up high or low. Uh, you can just leave your fan running so you get good airflow in your house. Uh, and that's, those thick air filters, the allergy filter, those are MERV uh, ratings of 18 to 22. Uh, those are going to really slow your airflow down uh, and, and might increase the humidity of your house. Uh, if you if you uh, uh, have if your air is not flowing uh, freely through there. Now, Dr. Prince, we're about out of time, but what new technologies are available in aiding the treatment of allergy sufferers? Well, we still, uh, you know, we, we, we do have some new drops and, and pills, uh, allergy, uh, you know, that we have dust mite, ragweed, uh, and grass uh, uh, tablets you can take. It doesn't appear to be as effective, uh, anywhere near as effective as the injections that we give for allergies. So a lot of technology has changed on these injections to now know what mixtures are, are more effective, which things, which allergens should not be mixed, and knowing a specific dose and concentration to use for each allergen. These are all th major changes that have occurred. So. Allergy shots have been around for about 110 years, and, and they're still effective. And, and so if people want to get rid of their allergies and decrease their susceptibility to things like uh, asthma and increase uh, uh, susceptibility to viral infections, uh, then the shots are the way to go. Okay, Dr. Prince, we just got about 30 seconds. Uh, how can people get hold of you, contact you, and look at maybe getting treatment? Allergy Asthma Sinus Center dot com five eight four eight five eight eight and we have a one eight hundred number one eight hundred six hundred seven five five one. Be glad to help anybody out.
Okay, 584-8588. Is that what you said, I think? Yes, that's our main and then, number. And then allergy, allergy asthma sinus center dot com. Well, Dr. Prince, you're always generous with you. Yes, sir. Uh, you're always so great with your time. Thank you so much for joining us and helping us kind of break through allergies versus coronavirus and maybe helping us differentiate. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate the opportunity. Yes, sir. We've been discussing your health because greater health provides for more living so you can live the best years of your life your way. Uh, please take care. God bless you. Stay healthy. You've been listening to More Living here on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. The views expressed by Jim Brogan and his guests are not that of Cumulus Media. Any discussion of financial, legal, and tax planning strategies is not intended to be individualized advice and is general in nature. Always consult with your advisor for advice specific to your needs. This program's content does not represent a recommendation of any particular security, strategy, or investment by Jim Brogan or Brogan Financial Incorporated.